What's up folks? Welcome to Lake of the Ozarks. Mike Marfell and myself yes. are fishing the Fishing for Warriors tournament. Warrior William. Warrior William tournament. If you haven't heard of it, check it out. They're full this year, but it's an annual event. So there will be positions available next year. It's an October Derby for a great cause. And we're just doing a little pre-practice today. Uh, dinner tonight and the tournament is tomorrow. And then there's a, is there some food following the tournament? Or yes, sir. There's like an awards ceremony type thing. So um, really good cause, really excited to do this. It's been going on for several years and I have not been able to make it, but uh, I made it a priority this year. And we just rolled in town. Got some plastic preservative McDonald's in our belly. Whoa. Fighting that off already, man. That was a bad idea. We wanted to go to the Pancake House, but there was, I don't know, like seven or eight parties deep oh, and waiting shit. line. Um, we're gonna dump this boat in and try to get a little game plan together for the morning. Mike, what's the plan? What's the plan? Go fishing. Go fishing, have fun. Yeah, go have fun. Just not at work today, man. Work's yeah. been crazy. Get to be out on the water with one of my best buds do some fishing we're gonna concentrate from probably what I'm guessing the 24 to the hurricane deck bridge yeah Just look sniff around in there figure something out sounds good is that a jig that is a jig head a dual half ounce finesse jig with no skirt getting sneaky sneaky, sneaky. Okay. with a power bait crawl uh, air temps are low 60s we had rain we drove through rain on the way here not not well we did drive through a patch of pretty heavy rain but it's just been kind of like that damp misty stuff um there's rain on the horizon tomorrow's supposed to be 60s a little front moving through i guess you would say we got some pretty gusty winds today and it's supposed to blow tomorrow but the good thing is there won't be hardly any pleasure boats out here so it won't be lake of the oceans like we're, we're used to i mean i you can't ever say that there's always going to be some yeah. goofballs out there running around but um nothing chatter coffee's kicking in let's go fishing His mouth's open. <laughs> I thought he was, he was just pin, had me pinned in the brush, I guess. I could feel him shaking on the other side of it. I think he had his mouth open. He's just digging water, I guess. Probably not a keeper, is he? He's yeah, probably close. He's, he's a stocky little something. Dig grave dig a dig. Cause rigor mortis is setting in. The little guy. It's a keeper, yeah. Superior dock skipping skills going on back here. <laughs> Never give up. This water's got pretty good stain back here. I think we should just start right here and go up around this point and just, you know, just fish a couple hundred yards to see. Cause I remember that was a sweet spot right there. If we get sucked in there, we'll be in here for three hours. Less chances of us running all the way back here from yeah. Red Oak or unless we catch a couple. Yeah, a little guy. Come off on your feet. 
Yep. I mean, it was little though. What was that? I don't know. There's something right here. You ever heard that before? No. Came from under here. It's like you had a pintail or a canvas back or something in the rod locker. Duck Dynasty. It just looks spinner baby too. I'm gonna throw one a little bit. I know you can catch a fish on a jig probably. How's there not a fish in this stuff? It looks good. Just thinking I need to put a spinner bait on there, or a uh, swim bait on there, but I guess he could. Spot lock. That's your one. Same dock. Two off the same dock, it's crazy. Is that a good one? Yeah, Man, that fish absolutely hammered it like he was a big boy. All right, that's a wrap on the practice video. Short day, caught a few fish, uh, jig, shaky head, a couple on a crankbait. We're back here at Greg's house. We're getting ready to go inside, tidy up, and uh, go to the meeting. So thanks for coming along. Wow. Next video will be Derby Day. Good morning, folks. It is Derby Day. We were boat number 94 in the Warrior William Tournament, fishing for Warriors, pulling out a red oak. It's a long idle. Um, boat checks all the way in the back, and this whole cove is an idle, so it's literally like, it's probably like a 10 minute idle. It's a good seven minutes for sure. Yeah. So it, it reminds me of the John Boat Tournaments we fish at Cedar Lake, where these people are all heading out to the main lake to take off, but 
It's like this slow, slow idle. Man, it's, it's chilly out here. It's like 50 degrees, the wind's blowing like 20, 30 um, maybe. It's, 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 sure. it's very gusty. It blew all night long. We had a little bit of rain yesterday morning. It's supposed to be overcast all day long. Uh, 50 now, maybe 61, 62 for the high. So, uh, actually, I like this kind of weather. I mean, minus the wind, the wind's a little much probably. Especially when you'll be fishing around docks and stuff, it's a little bit hard to skip because you got the wave action. The smoother the water, the easier it is to skip. So, we're gonna be uh, our baits are gonna be eating some waves here before long. But we're gonna start out on a kind of a main lake point. We fished it yesterday. It's got some brush on it. We're gonna go check that for a while. See if uh, some of those fish moved up in the brush piles. And then we're just gonna bounce around from there. Um, Hunter boat tournament. Had a great time at the banquet last night. Um, it's good to meet all the folks. Uh, speaking was great by everybody that was behind the microphone. So good job, everybody. Um, after the tournament, we've got the weigh-in ceremony or the award ceremony and all the uh, raffle stuff's going to be given away tonight, so that's pretty cool. I bought twenty dollars worth and put them in a bunch. Of, they had a bunch of really good gifts. This is something you guys, if you're watching this video, check it out next year. It's a hundred boat tournament. They're talking about maybe making it bigger, but it's been a really good time. And the prize, the prizes are phenomenal. There's a lot of stuff out there giving away. So shout out to the sponsors for stepping up. It's a great tournament. Supports Rhett Syndrome Foundation and. Um, that's really all I got. Hopefully, we'll put us a little limit together and you'll see us in the check line. That's the plan. Mike, what do you think, man? Any? I think we're gonna catch them either really good or not at all, is what I'm thinking today, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Uh, we had a hard time getting anything big yesterday, right? I mean, yeah. we're gonna see, we're gonna go fish an area that I've had a lot of success in this time of year and there's no docks, so that might make it a little easier. If that didn't work out in the first hour, we're going fishing. Yeah, so, I think so. Yeah, I mean, most of the fish we caught yesterday were around docks. And, and, you know, it seemed like we got some bites around docks, but yeah, well, yeah, but uh, it'll be a little bit. You're really gonna have to pick your coves today because the wind's gonna be howling in there. Uh, they're boat 74, so putting the camera down. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. 94. Good luck. You're all bundled up like you're making a long run. <laughs> They're all long when you get my age. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. 92, 93, 94, 95. <laughs> Good job, man. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 10 horse body. What's yes, up? Man. All right. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Good luck, guys. We're going to need a little bit. Get it. There's no bad luck. We'll have to pee again before we get out of here. It's like a turtle race. <laughs> I wouldn't decide that. Good luck tonight. You too, man. Stay safe. Alright folks, hope you're enjoying the video so far. Um, had a little surprise when we got off the water. My chesty microphone was not recording. Just a amateur mistake. I didn't plug it in all the way. Anyway, I didn't have any chesty, chesty audio. So I'm going to commentate over some of the footage and then some of the footage are going to use the back cam for the audio. We started out the tournament 
on a point. We made about a 20 minute run to a main lake point and we'd got some bites there the day before in practice. The wind was howling. I mean, it was just blowing in pretty hard on that point. It was making it very difficult to fish. We were dragging stuff on the bottom and I couldn't feel my bait. So I picked up a crankbait, started firing it around and ended up catching a couple crappie. It just wasn't going down like what we were hoping was going on. It just wasn't happening. So, you know, we caught another bass or two, just some small fish, but we decided to make a run and we ran, oh, about another 10 minutes down the lake and we just picked out a cove that we'd had success in in the past and just started doing some work um, around docks. You know, Mike's, Mike's a jig fisherman. He kept that jig in his hand all day long. And something I typically do behind somebody that's fishing a jig is I like to throw a shaky head, just give them a little bit of a different look. So I got a lot of confidence, shaky head, and I was getting some bites. You know, my line was getting tight. We we're picking up some bites and it took us a while to finally get a keeper. But we pulled into one little cove and towards the back of the cove, uh, Mike catches the first keeper of the tournament. Number one, it's a baby. I start somewhere. Well, we got one in the boat. Even if it's a small fish, like a pound and a half, or it still makes you feel good to finally get one in the boat. We're just trying to figure out what areas and what parts of the docks that these fish are using. Are they using the walkways, the back corners, the sides, the front corners, across the front, the brush relating to the docks? Um, what part of the cove are they in? Are they in towards the mouth, the middle section, the last docks in the back? And it's a process of elimination. You kind of got to try several different coves, several locations before you can figure it out. Didn't have a lot of time to practice the day before. So we were still practicing during the tournament and we're catching some fish, you know, we're getting bites and it's still fairly early. I guess we're probably three hours into the tournament. We got that first keeper. So we are behind the ball, but we still got plenty of time to make some adjustments. So we're just keeping our head down, covering water and just trying to piece it all together. Yeah. Uh, maybe. It doesn't feel like a bass though. Catfish. Heavy. 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 Sometime during the morning, I decided to pick up a white swim jig. I was just throwing the True Track swim jig by Cumberland Pro Lures. There's a lot of shad around these docks, and we were seeing some gizzard shad up shallow. So I just started skipping that swim jig around. And it's interesting, I caught my second keeper, or we caught our second keeper, and I'd skipped underneath this cable underneath the back of this dock two or three times before that fish bit it. And Mike had already fired 
a jig under there a couple times and it always amazes me when a fish waits until that fifth or sixth cast to bite you know a lot of times you just fire once or twice under something and you're trying to cover water hit as many targets as possible so usually you're only going to cast once or twice underneath um, a dock cable or something but sometimes that fourth or fifth cast is what yields that bite and that's exactly what happened for our second keeper Go number two. Day's been going. Midday report. It's kind of slow out here. The wind is howling. Overcast had a little bit of rain here and there. Um, we've got two in the live well. It is one o'clock, and we have to check in at 3:30. So we got some work to do. The only fish that we've got in the live well came on one on a swim jig and then one on a football jig i've been getting some bites on a shaky head but it's just tough man we're just grinding around flipping around docks and we've tried some points try a little bit of everything so hopefully we'll uh run across a couple before it's time to put this sucker back on the trailer the water temps are 71.4 and most of the lake that we fish has been pretty clear. I mean, probably four foot of visibility or something like that. It's, it's cloudy, so it, it's probably even a little more clear than that. So, hopefully, we'll be holding a five pounder here in a minute. Still hunting, still pecking, still looking for keeper number three, four, and five. We just kind of committed to the dock thing. I've been keeping that shaky head in my hand. Mike's throwing a jig. I did throw a topwater a little bit, throw a crankbait, the hybrid hunter and square bill around the outsides of those docks. And, uh, you know, I flipped a creature bait, like a brush hog, but you know, just, I don't know. We're just grinding, trying to figure it out and just trying to keep our baits wet. Cause it can happen anytime. So often, there's little feeding windows that pop up and you just got to keep your bait wet. Fishing out of the back of the boat. Um, you know, a lot of times you have a tendency to just keep trying to change baits, but you know, something I've learned over the years is you got to keep your confidence bait in the water when it's, when it's tough, just keep your bait wet. I mean, it's going to be most likely green pumpkin or June bug. So mix those up and just keep your bait wet. But we're catching a few fish, you know, we're still getting our lines tied and we're just covering water. Just keep covering water and keep covering water. And finally, we connect with our third keeper.
keeper. We've got about 30 minutes to go and uh, Mike went to fire up the big motor to try one last spot and we're dead in the water. He's got a jump switch but it's not working either. We got a little bit of trolling motor juice so we're just trying to stay out of the wind or get back in this code where we don't blow out in the main lake. So looks like we're probably going to end up throwing these fish back. Hopefully somebody can come and jump us. We've got a little bit of food, we got water so we'll be fine. Rain gear. But uh, we got three in the boat, probably six and a half pounds, maybe, if we're lucky, maybe six. So that's the update. All right, we got the boat started. Uh, we got 11 minutes to get back to the marina check-in, so that's good. I didn't want to be stranded here all night Luckily, we borrowed a stinching cord from some guy up there and plugged it in and it fired right up So here we go So that's the tournament folks um, You know, we didn't have the way to even weigh in and with the battery problems there was no need to um, haul those fish up there and drag them across the stage had a fun time we're going to do a recap here on the on the ride home just talk about the event and just um, the things that we learned things that we didn't learn stuff like that but this is a phenomenal event it's an annual deal so 2024 is already open they're accepting signups right now go check out the tournament it is top-notch Lots of giveaways, lots of good raffles. Um, it's great to meet all the people, talk, mingle. You know, there's something about when you get in, a, in an establishment with a bunch of like-minded people, just a bunch of fish heads, people that are there for the camaraderie. There's people that are hardcore, they're really trying to win. And there's people that are just trying to get out of the house and enjoy nature. You got everything in between there and we all mingle, we're all passionate about the sport of fishing that we love so you know it it is what it is of course you always want to bring in 20 25 pounds but it doesn't happen like that I always have fun fishing with mike so here is the recap on the way home driving down a lonely country road on our way back from lake of the ozarks heading to fenton uh tournament was tough on us we had three small keepers probably about six pounds jig swim jig and a shaky head caught quite a few fish on a shaky head but of course most of them were small it took a lot to win the tournament was it adam Bowley or boy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah adam, something. anyway he had like 22 something pounds 23 almost 23 and i think uh he had three for about 18 so uh top water and i can't remember what else light bait. light bait or something anyway he had it figured out um i one thing I wish I would have done, but I was just being lazy, was I should have taken this camera into the dinner, uh, the pre-tournament dinner, because there was a lot of great guests there, and I should have also taken it to the ceremony after the tournament. So you guys could have seen how that went down. It would have been really noisy in there, but should have done that. That's just my bad. But 20, I think there was 21 something pounds for second place. There was. 18 something pound bag several 15 pounds so people caught them i talked to a lot of people that only had one or two fish though so you're either on them or you weren't weren't um, we weren't really on them like i said we had three and we had we just threw them back there's no need to put those fish in water and haul them around we did get the boat started which was nice um, 
something's going on with the batteries. I don't know, but luckily there was a guy up there at his house, and Mike walked up there and bumped an extension cord up in front of him. And as soon as he plugged it in, we got direct power to the batteries. They fired right up. So that's something we'll have to figure out before uh, he's got the the old outdoors deal, right? Championship, yeah. It's yeah. Locked and in the, the weekend of the October 23rd, 4th, I think it is. And then we've got the Anglers in Action championship coming in the first weekend of November so we'll, we'll have some more from tournament footage going on but um, like I said earlier in the video the the Warrior William Foundation please check that out it's, a, it's an annual event and man the the uh, silent auction prizes and the raffle prizes were unbelievable yeah. I mean thousands and thousands of dollars worth yeah probably of stuff and good odds too yeah, yeah. I'm guessing there was if I had to put a number, would you say somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand yeah, dollars worth of gear? I, I would say. I mean, it was impressive. Very and they impressive. had stuff from uh, Crocagator, Bojangles. They had some some high end whiskey, bourbon type yeah. stuff, some wine, solo stoves, solo stoves, Yeti coolers. Yeti. They had a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. And it was twenty bucks. You got a whole. I don't know how many tickets you got. Maybe it's a twenty tickets or something like that. But anyway, you just. You know how it is, you walk around and put them in a basket or whatever, uh, yeah. whatever you want to uh, try to win. Sorry about this camera, this road's a little bit bumpy. But great time, man. The food was top notch. Um, I ate like five chicken legs and a big old pork steak, and we got we got stuff. And camaraderie, camaraderie is always always good. It's that tournament is, you know, even the, even when you stink it up, you still feel that like you're doing something for a good cause. And, like I said, the camaraderie is, is always good talking to like-minded individuals. But um, it's another, you know, 50 degree day and fall is pushing through. You know, yeah. there's cold fronts pushing through. The weather's gonna continue to drop. The water temperature's gonna continue to drop and the fishing should get better. Um, a lot of people caught them on top waters, but a lot of people didn't catch them on top waters that were throwing top waters. I talked to Denise Steele and she said she threw a top water all day long and caught one keeper. But some people caught 18 pounds of top water. So it's just a location thing and a timing thing. Yeah, I'd like to know if it was, you know, we talked about we didn't fish steep stuff all day. Maybe that was where we made our mistake. You know, yeah. I know guys that caught them told me they caught them shallow. But that doesn't mean they didn't catch them shallow on a steep bank. We were on pretty flat stuff. So that might have been, from my experience, that's probably where we went wrong. Or type of rock. Lake of the Ozarks is almost type of rock kind of thing, too. So. For charity, that's what we're telling ourselves. It's yeah. for a good time. And they're taking entries already for next year, so they're only taking 100 boats, so if you want to do it, go ahead and get in now. It's it's, it's a dang, dang good time. I think it's my third one. I'll probably, uh, I'll definitely probably be signing up here real soon. Uh, they take care of you, for sure. Yeah. Food-wise and just drinks and everything, uh, both Friday and Saturday, so. And you get a grab bag, you get a cooler. Yeah. Um, cool as goodies. Where's the cooler? I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's on the floor. Anyway, there's a little cooler with grab bag and uh, just some baits and stuff in there. So everybody gets a prize. It's kind of nice. But uh, check that out. Yeah. And, uh, Go ahead, Gabe. I'm going to work on uh, getting Moto Stop to put a package together for uh, the, the auction prize next year in combination with hopefully I can get something going with first form outdoors and get them to put their protein sticks and hydration uh drink mix and stuff and their protein bars uh perfect food for the boat uh check them out if you haven't the first form meat sticks basically are 20 grams of protein and hardly any sugar and same way with their hydration sticks they don't put any dye in that stuff so hopefully i can get a package together uh and with between them motor stop and uh bluff city outdoors and we can have a auction item help help raise some money. Yeah, and they're good too. I had I had some of the. Yeah, the jalapeno, meat. right? Yeah. Breakfast good. sausage is my favorite. Okay. Jalapeno is really good too. Yeah, it was pretty good. So that's all we got for you. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, give us a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we're doing live streams on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock. We had Dion on not too long ago. We've been trying nights? to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Mondays before.
before, right? We were Mondays, but it's been so hard to get off work on time. I got you. Tuesday's been hard to get off. Well, of I work never too. watched you live because I'm a, in the fall because I'm a football junkie, so I was always watching Monday Night Football. It's, it's hard to compete with Monday Night Football. It is, it and is then, for for me, but I always I watched it the next day or listened to it at work, either one. But yeah, and I never got to make stupid comments because I wasn't live. <laughs> there's a lot of holidays on Mondays too, That's so good. people don't like to watch fishing shows on the holiday they like to do you know the relax. numbers game how many more people watch it post than live um i don't i don't know the numbers is, that, I, is there a way to figure i mean yeah to, yeah there is yeah i can check out the algorithm and the analytics and stuff but one thing i do know is you get a lot more participation in the winter time the earlier it gets dark the more people tune in to sense. uh fishing shows and things like that and everybody wants to work and when they can't outside be out fishing too but. yeah yeah exactly a lot of people are fishing until eight o'clock in the summertime and they're definitely not going to listen to somebody talk about fishing especially when they can watch it the next day that that would probably be the time when more people watch it the next day i'd say your actual crowd participation is higher in the winter and um, more people are looking for things to do. Yeah, but if you got a person, a guest that people want to ask a question, man, that's it's such a cool format that you can reach out and ask Dion something. Yeah, it is, and that that's what makes the show. It's the people yeah, that absolutely. watch and ask the questions because I always have a few questions written down, but most of the time I don't even get to those questions because the crowd interaction just kind of feeds the show. It makes it more organic, and everybody everybody's coming from a different place in fishing, so. There are no stupid questions, you know. There's there's no two cool. answers the same either. Yeah, there's questions all the way from how do you pick out a two pound bass versus a three pound bass on live scope to how do you rig a soft plastic worm? You know, there's right. that and everything in between, and they're all good questions. Um, even even if you've been fishing forever, it's good to hear those questions and answers just to review, just to refresh in your mind because sometimes we get so complacent and. Yeah. fishing in life that we forget the simple stuff we're like oh yeah I, I used to do it that way why don't i do it that way yeah anymore? i found that coaching the high school kids they'd ask me questions and i was like oh, i haven't thought about why i do that in a long time so you know you learn a lot from people asking questions you know that's why i enjoyed teaching the young kids when i was coaching those high school kids so yeah so i've heard stan say the same thing about the guitar yeah. giving guitar lessons he it reminds him of what he why he does what he does or you know the theory behind it becomes so natural when you just do it right so yeah yeah 100 percent. you ask me a question about a jig i'm not dion hipton obviously but i'm gonna have a slightly different answer than dion you know everybody does it different yeah. but i do it more like dion after i spent a day on the water and he explained how he fishes his jig and i i, I definitely listened if you don't listen to that guy about how to fish a jig or any of his boys you're probably being a little hard-headed so can always I'm an old man and I still learn something so that, yeah and that's it, what the live stream is all about yes everybody's got a different way of doing yep. things and even if you learn what to do wrong <laughs> yeah I, I, there's been multiple times where I've been out with somebody that doesn't fish a whole lot and I tell them okay throw this Texas rig worm out let's sink to the bottom just pull it a little bit and let it sit pull it a little bit sit and let it sit well they're working it a way in a way that I've never worked it before like just reeling it in they kept, they're catching fish so sometimes yeah. it's good to pay everybody's a teacher in some form yeah. or fashion and we can learn from everybody even me I learned this weekend to keep an extension cord in your boat that's right you're at Lake of the Ozarks there's plenty of docks with a plug in there yep. so I'll be keeping an extension cord in there I use my, my jump switch always works I have no idea how those batteries yeah. We didn't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. We'll go get them load test. Take them to the fish hole, get them checked out. So if we got to buy all new ones, we will. I've yep. got five freaking AGMs in there and it would, not enough poop to turn that over. So I, I'm not sure. Break out another thousand. It's low. It's what it <laughs> yeah, is. it's going to be more than that. But yeah. All right, we're out of here. Thanks. Until next time.